Hey everybody, and welcome back to another video. Now, if you've watched some of my earlier videos, it's probably no surprise to you that I am absolutely addicted to the Hunter Guild and completing rumors. And while I've been having an absolute ton of fun doing them, I enjoy the gameplay loop a lot, I did want to see what the actual rates are like, what kind of experience can we get? Is this actually going to be a new solid way of training or is it just kind of like a fun thing to do on the side and grind out for the pet? So instead of getting any sleep today, I fired up the stream and we went for a 100 expert sack completion. In total, this took just over 10 hours. I did it about in a five hour session and then I took like a, a nap and then I did another five hour session. But in total, yes, 10 hours to complete 100 expert rumors. Over this entire chunk, we got 1.08 million hunter experience, which comes out to just over 105K an hour. And I'll talk a little bit about my strategy as well as kind of go over the experience rates um, in a little bit, but I wanted to start off with the juicy stuff. Let's talk about the loot. So here was a loot tracker after 100 expert sacks. With the current prices, it comes out to around 3 million, but we can analyze this a little bit further and come up with, I guess, a couple more takeaways. First up, six outfit pieces in 100 seems really, really lucky. I would not expect this, but I did manage to complete my set. You might be wondering why the headband isn't there. I actually already had the headband from earlier rumors, uh, so it's not like you can get duplicates. Um, I got the full set first, and then I started getting duplicates. As of now, I don't know what the use of duplicates are. Hopefully, they add a way for you to trade them in for rerolls like you might see at Winter Todd. Okay, so 3 million total. This comes out to about 300k an hour. However, keep in mind that while we're hunting, we're also getting resources. Some of the tasks I did the most were red chins, dashing kebits, as well as sunlight antelopes, which all have stuff that is also uh, profitable and makes money. And while I didn't get the exact number, I had like a couple red chins in the bank. I made about 1,000 red chins over the course of the 10 hours, about 500 raw dashing kebits, and about 150 raw sunlight antelope. I also chiseled down all the antlers to make sunlight antler bolts. This is because I kind of needed them for my sunlight crossbow. But the guide price here is not accurate. I think these are going for like 80 each, not 600 each. So I think it's safe to say that in total, probably made around 2 million in drops that we received from doing all this hunter. This would bring the total up to about 5 million an hour, so 500k an hour. That 10 hour number goes really well here. It makes things a lot easier to kind of visualize. In addition, we also got an insane amount of bone shards by doing all of these rumors. Not only do we get 8,300 bone shards, but 295 sunkiss bones. These can all be chiseled down for 45 bone shards each. This comes out to 21.6 thousand bone shards in total. And if you didn't know, bone shards can be converted into prayer experience at the new prayer training method over at the libation bowl. It's six prayer experience per bone shard. So in total, we're looking at about 130K prayer experience banked. It's very, very fast to actually go ahead and process it once you have it in bone shard form, basically. So that's also 13K prayer experience per hour on top of the 105K hunter that I was getting. And given that one of the most popular methods for getting your prayer up is dragon bones at the chaos altar in the wildy, 130k prayer experience is roughly 1 million that you would have spent on dragon bones at the wildy altar. And that's assuming like basically, you know, no deaths or anything at all. And that would be like 2 million an hour if you were just doing, you know, the gilded altar. Obviously, if you're 99 prayer or you don't care at all for prayer, you're not, you know, generating 1 mil, but it's essentially 1 million gold that you're saving that you would have spent on prayer otherwise. But let's just stick with that 1 million number so that's actually going to take it from five mil total to six mil total and about 600k gold an hour that you're basically making but at 600k an hour honestly that's a pretty decent money maker for a skilling method especially one that's a little bit more fun than some of the, you know the more boring methods like smithing at the blast furnace for iron men there's also a number of pretty interesting drops bird's nests are of course always going to be good for ceridomen brews as well as herbs and prayer are always nice to have those are some of the harder skills to train as an iron however i did want to point out that i got 12 magic logs over 100 loot sacks this is important because Ironmen typically need 12 magic logs for desert treasure, and this is one way that you can get them without having to resort to Winter Todd or grinding out 75 woodcutting or, you know, spending like an hour doing the Yumi trees after Legends Quest. I don't know how lucky 12 was. I don't know if it's scaled based off of your woodcutting level or anything like that. All I know is that for future accounts, I would much rather, you know, go ahead and do the Hunter's Guild to get my magic logs rather than spend, you know, all that time uh, collecting it through other methods. And at the very least, it's just an extra chance to get your magic logs if you didn't get it from like brimstone keys or winter todd etc and all the raw hunter meat is really nice cooking experience source of food 
or you can use it to upgrade the Moonlight Moths. I made a video about that recently. You can check that out as well. Moving on, let's talk about experience rates. As I mentioned earlier, I got 1.08 million over the course of 10 hours, which is um, just north of 105K an hour. And this was pretty consistent throughout the whole 10 hour stretch. I think it started off around like 102K and then around at level 80, it got a bit faster because I could use five traps at a time. This was especially helpful for red chins, which are probably the slowest tasks that I was doing. So let's compare that to some of the other experience rates you can get around this level red salamanders offer around 105k per hour at level 67 at around level 80 black salamanders will give you somewhere between 140 to 150 thousand per hour however this would require you to go into the wildy so that is something to keep in mind here are the experience rates for black chins one of the most popular training methods past level 80 this is like absolute peak efficiency using tick manipulation and it also assumes that you know you're not getting like pk'd constantly uh black chins are a very uh popular spot spot to get PK. But I just want to show this as like a higher end option. For some more chill options, here are red chins. You can see that before level 80, significantly less experience because you don't have access to the fifth trap. At level 80 though, the experience rate with no tick manipulation is very, very much in line with the experience rates that I was getting doing hunter rumors. And I don't know exactly how many red chins you can get. I've seen that somewhere around 400 to 450 which brings the hourly profit to around 500 to 550k. So again, this is very similar experience rates to the Hunter's Guild, about the same amount of profit per hour as well. Here's the herbivore experience rates. You can see at level 80, we're making 137k. So it is a step up. You're getting quite a bit more experience doing that. Keep in mind that this would require stamina potions to get these rates. And while it is more experience, you aren't making nearly as much money as red chins or doing the hunter rumors. Finally, birdhouses. These guys do have a pretty ridiculous effective experience per hour rate. And doing these, you know, once every hour when they're up is still going to be by far the fastest experience basically all the way. That being said, I absolutely hate doing birdhouses and I think they're one of the worst updates to the game. So really, I think I'm going to be doing a lot more hunter rumors in the future. I think the best comparison was to red chins because at level 80, the rates and the Money is about equal and i just found that the hunter rumor flow was a little bit more fun and engaging than like literally just sitting at red chins for like 10 hours straight and remember that expert hunter rumors you can actually start these at level 72 so before 80 i think this definitely beats out red chins okay so let's talk a little bit about my strategy because if you kind of go into this with no knowledge um you probably are not going to be finding yourself getting nearly the same amount of rates and i know a lot of people have been turned off from hunter rumors because there's kind of a lot of slow tasks that we need to avoid to actually get like optimal rates i've already made videos going over the hunter rumor block system but to give a very basic rundown no two guild hunters can give you the same contract this means that we can get contracts on some of the lower level masters to act as blocks from the higher level tasks and additionally all kebet rumors share the same item this means that if we get something like a saber tooth kebets we can swap instead to a falconry kebet task such as dashing kebets complete that one and then swap back to the Sabertooth Kebet. And we've essentially completed the Sabertooth Kebet by doing Falconry. This is Kebet swapping or counterfeit Kebets. I do have a video on that as well. With those in mind, we create something of an optimal expert block list. Here are the possible expert tier assignments. There are two expert masters and they both share the same list. And here is what my personal block list looks like. The highlighted ones are my blocks. Pyre Foxes are blocked by Adept. This is no question. Sabertooth Kaya is blocked by the novice task. Gray Chins are also blocked by by an adept task. Chinchampas are a fairly slow task and I've spent upwards of like 55 minutes at one red chin task. I definitely would have been a lot faster than 10 hours if that one didn't go so dry, but I think it's fair to show, you know, a general estimate. And I just figured that if I'm going to be hunting chinchampas for an hour, I'd rather be doing red chinchampas uh, for better experience. And my other expert guild hunter is blocking dashing kebets. This is so that every time I get razorback kebets, saber tooth kebets, or dark kebets, I can instead swap to the dashing kebet task and complete it with falconry. You might be wondering why I'm using dashing kebets instead of dark kebets over an adept like I mentioned in my last video. And this is because dashing kebets are the only falconry task that actually gives you raw meat. So this is a nice way of making a little bit more money. Or if you're playing an Iron Man, which I was, this was all done on my hardcore Iron Man, the raw dashing kebets can be used to upgrade moonlight moths into moonlight moth mixes or just use as a source of both cooking as well as actually really good food for later bossing and whatnot. So that's why I think dashing kebets in expert are uh, uh, pretty damn good and that's why i've been kind of using that setup this leaves me with just 
orange salamanders, razorbacked and saber-toothed kebits, which we accomplished by doing falconry. These essentially are dashing kebits. Dark kebits, which is falconry, but I usually swap to dashing kebit again just to get some more meat. Red salamanders, red chins, and sunlight antelope. Red chins along with sunlight antelope are definitely the slowest task in this list, but I really like doing them because they actually give you decent loot. Red chins are obviously used for range experience later on, and I really wanted to get a whole bunch of sunlight antlers to chisel it down into making bolts for the new sunlight crossbow i have been testing the new sunlight crossbow it's really damn good so it's definitely worth the time to actually be making those bolts as you go basically the idea behind this block list is that i want tasks to either be fast give good experience or to give loot falconry tasks are very very fast and we have three of them orange salamanders and red salamanders are a nice mix they give pretty good experience rates but you can usually complete them uh, rather quickly only thing i'll say is that red salamanders can be a little bit crowded so just check both spots and you know hop around it usually took me about five world hops to find not too bad and again red chins and sunlight antelope a little bit slower but they give good loot so i don't really mind doing them now if you don't care about the dashing kebit meat this might be a slightly faster block list instead of dashing kebit we're going to be blocking sunlight antelope and we're actually going to be devoting the adept spot instead of blocking gray chins we're going to be blocking spotted kebits now you might be wondering why spotted kebits instead of dark kebits this is because dark kebit is a possible expert task and if you use your adept task to block dark kebits you won't be receiving any dark kebit tasks from the expert master so in this setup we have four falconry tasks using spotted kebits if we were to use dark kebits we would only be getting three so we're basically cutting out uh, one good task from experts ultimately it's not the end of the world if you use dark kebits in a depth, but it is a slight optimization to be using spotted kebits instead. And in this task list, we basically have two salamanders, two chinchampas, and four falconry. It's a pretty damn good list. You could also opt for something like this instead. Basically, instead of blocking sunlight antelope, we're just blocking gray chins instead. If you just really don't like doing gray chins, again, they are a pretty long task. Sometimes they can take like more than half an hour. I think it's just personal preference though. Uh, whether you like sunlight antelope or gray chins, I just think that gray chins take a little bit longer. So if you want to absolutely optimize like the fastest, um, I guess like rumors possible, this would probably be it. Overall, I think that once you've kind of set up a nice block list, the Hunter Guild just gets so much more fun. It's a lot faster and it feels like you're getting some pretty decent uh, experience rates as well as some really decent loot. I've just been absolutely loving the game flow. I think it's really easy to just go into the next task. If you need to take a break and like, if you want to go do birdhouses or something, that's totally fine too. It's not like, you're not like hard stuck to one task for like an hour at a time, except, you know, sometimes with chin chompas. And it doesn't really feel like it's so broken that like you absolutely have to do it. It's just a really nice alternative. I think especially for Ironman now, Early game Hunter Rush is definitely on the table. I could see a lot more value in uh, trying to get this done early, getting all of the prayer, the herb lore, getting Moonlight Moths from, you know, doing Hunter in general. And I know that a lot of group Ironmen already send somebody to go get 83 Hunter early for glories. So this, I think, is just a nicer way to kind of get there. I definitely think that if I make a future Ironman, uh, I'm going to be doing this as well. Finally, I do think that this could be optimized a little bit further as we discover a couple more things as the rates come out. I do have something cooking in the background right now to really get absurd rates doing this but it's going to take me a little bit of time to fully set up so expect that video coming out in the near future i hope that this helped to give a rundown of what the hunter guild actually feels like in the mid game the experience rates the loot that you might expect doing it if you want to watch me doing all of those hunter rumors i do have the vod available on youtube as well as twitch so you can check that out just if you want to see like how i'm going from task to task to task it's pretty damn simple mainly just using fairy rings and i don't even have a fairy in my player own house that probably would have sped up every task by like 15 to 20 seconds honestly so this could be a lot faster um just by having like all your proper teleports set up thank you guys for watching i'll see you in the next video have a wonderful rest of your day